so glad that the USB is actually working. Because <laughs> when the genders put the new, the new uh, tables, they stretch the USB cord. Like, oh, it broke. It didn't break. <laughs> okay. USB still working. Hopefully. Let's see. Yep, audio is working too. All right, cool. All right. So uh, again, like I said before, um, power and current is primarily used as a tool for circuits. Now we're going to talk about circuits. We're going to talk about all the elements in a circuit and how we can look at the potential, the current, and the resistance through those elements. There are two types of circuits. Uh, there are series circuits where elements are lined up one after another after another, requiring them to go through one path. And if anything in the path breaks, the whole chain breaks. Okay, Old Christmas lights, before you were born, uh, old Christmas lights used to be wired this way, where if one light went out, the whole chain would go out. And then it was just like really annoying, so they're like, hey, we should just be able to fix that. And they did. It didn't take long, but the longest time, it was like, it's like a, for, for your parents and my generation, it was like a, a, it was like a meme. The Christmas lights were like a meme. Because if one went out, they would all go out. Um, nowadays, you generally only find series circuits in one place around safety devices. So you put fuses and breakers in line in series or something if you want to protect that thing. So um, you put a, a GFCI in series with your outlets in your bathroom. So if anything goes horribly wrong in the bathroom, the GFCI will kill or will basically stop the current. And circuits, basically you put all of your bathroom through one circuit, all your kitchen through another circuit on a breaker so those are in line with the breaker if the breaker turns off no power can get to any of those devices okay again in the series circuit all the all the current travels in a chain now the important thing about a series circuit is because everything travels in a chain if anything breaks they all turn off it also means the same current is traveling through all three devices okay same current traveling through all three devices so if this light gets one amp of current, this light gets an amp, and this light gets an amp. Remember, the current is a flow of charge, so you can't have charges piled up. You have to have the same flow throughout the entire circuit. Now, parallel circuits are far more common. Um, almost everything in your house is wired in parallel, so you don't have to worry about, like, I have to use my toaster to use my microwave. So, you know, you can plug in your toaster to work or not, plug in your microwave to work or not. So in parallel, there are multiple paths for each uh, for the current to travel. And each path is independent of the other paths. So <clears throat> right now, you've got current traveling through three paths. There's a path and back. There's a path and back. There's a path and back. If I unplug this one, these two are going to stay on. That's how parallel works. Also important about parallel, the current in each light is independent of every other light, and the potential that each light sees is equal to whatever is coming out of the wall. So this one sees 110, this one sees 110, even though that one's there, it doesn't matter, this one sees 110 as well. With a series circuit, the potential has to be divided amongst whatever's in the circuit. So let me show you an example. plugged in we are okay so I got it right this wired to DC right now and right now it's these this light seeing about nine volts let me pump it up a little bit turned up a tiny bit this is just a car car bulb there you go 10 volts okay now if I attach another one identical bulb what do you think is going to happen to the brightness of the bulb will this one be brighter less bright or or more bright, if I'm, so I'm going to attach it like this, attach one more bulb to it. What do you think? You think about it for a little bit. Chat with your neighbor. I'm going to have an identical bulb. I'm going to attach it one here, one here. It's, they're going to be identically plugged into the same potential. Will this bulb be the same brightness when I add it? More bright or less bright? Go ahead and chat with your neighbor for a second. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, right. And to be clear, this wire, this wire has positive charge, this wire has negative charge. So this wire goes to the battery, this wire goes to the battery. Okay, who says when I plug this in, um, this bulb is going to be brighter than that one? No one. Who says this bulb is going to be dimmer than that one? No one. Oh. Oh, yeah? Hey, it's okay. I think they're both going to be dim. You're not going to, you're not going to agree. You think they're both going to dim? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and you would think they're going to be the same? No change? Okay, a couple. Well, let's plug it in and find out. There's that one. There's that one. So, same brightness. And then the same brightness, because they are in a parallel circuit. This one is totally independent of this one. So I like unplug it. Nope. Plug it back in. Doesn't change that one at all. So they are independent of each other because they're both connected to the same circuit. Now, if I take, okay, does that, you buy that? Okay. So they, they both see the same potential, the same V. They both have the same R. So they both have the same I. And let's go ahead and just diagram that. Remember, when you're talking about circuits, we use the application of Ohm's law, V equals IR. They both see the same V. They both see the same R. So they both have the same I. And brightness, I told you last time, brightness is an analog to what? What is brightness measure? Potential? No. Brightness measures, current is the flow of charge. Brightness measures power. Okay. Power is energy divided by time. Okay. Power is energy divided by time. So brightness is a measurement of power. The brighter something is, the more power it's consuming. Now, the reason these things are both identical and it doesn't matter if I unplug, unplug it. Oh, there we go. So it's like, hey, no good. Um, because they are both seeing the same V. They both have the same I. And or they both have the same R, so they both have the same I. And if they have the same V and they have the same I, they have the same power. That means they both have the same brightness. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now. This one, I've rigged two bulbs, and would you say this is a series circuit or a parallel circuit, this little section? It's series, because one goes to the next, the current's gonna go flow in here, through the wire, and out there. So this is series, and watch what happens when I put these bulbs, which are in series, into the parallel section. Yes, I know. There we go. It's like. Are you sure you want to be taught to 10 volt DC? Not a lot of way, not a lot of way around it. So what would you say about the brightness of these bulbs compared to that one? Less. Less. So these bulbs, this bulb right here is seeing 10 volts. These bulbs are seeing 10 volts between the two of them. So this one gets five volts and this one gets five volts. They have to share the 10 volts. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, if they have to share the 10 volts, then their V is only 5 volts each, and they see more resistance because the bulbs are the resistance. The wires don't have much resistance. This bulb has a certain amount of resistance. That's what causes the bulb to light up. The current travels through that teeny wire. It's like trying to ram people through a single, like a door, like that one door outside. You know, all the people going through the door, it creates resistance. Um, well, imagine instead of a door, we had a turnstile. And every time when someone went through, it, it spun. And the more people went through, the harder it was to spin. That's what's happening here. Turnstile is that, that thing where you go into a concert that turns, like the, that metal bar that mm -hmm. moves. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, so you have more resistance with two bulbs lined up like this. So there's more R, which means per bulb, there's less I. So not only do you have less V per bulb, you have less I. And it might surprise you to find out, but we'll prove this mathematically later, the brightness of that single bulb is more than the brightness of these two guys combined. By adding another bulb, we made these guys more dim than together than one bright bulb. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, but like, but why is that? Since those two. Would you like me to do the math for you? Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so. I need the whole board. Let's go do this later, but we can do it right now, which is just fine. So with one bulb, so our circuit's a 10 volt circuit. Like a voltage source, and we got one bulb, this is 10 volts, and um, to make the, the math really, really easy, let's make the resistance of the bulb one ohm. Mm -hmm. It's probably pretty close, in fact. So that's gonna be one ohm. So 10 volts, V equals IR, can you see this back there, please? Okay. So V equals IR, 10 volts, 1 ohm. The current that travels through is how much current? Mm -hmm. How much? Yeah, 10 amps. 10 amperes. There's 10 amperes going through. So far, so good? So if there's 10 amperes going through the bulb, the power of the bulb which is which corresponds to brightness is IV, which is 10 amperes by 10 volts, which is 100 watts. By the way, that's not even remotely 100 watts. I'm just making the math simple. Okay. So far, so good. Now, two bulbs in series. Draw the same diagram. We got one voltage source, and then we have a bulb. And another bulb, there's a bulb, there's a bulb, this is one ohm, and this is one ohm. So far, so good? The battery is still 10 volts. Now, because there are two one ohm resistors next to each other, it has to go through one ohm, then another ohm. The current slows down, the resistance what slows down current, the current slows down, and it sees an equivalent resistance of two ohms. So if the bulb sees an equivalent resistance of two ohms, what is the current in this bulb up here? Should be five. No, not five. Um, is it like half of the the other one? Yeah, it's gonna be okay. it's gonna be not ten amps but five amps. Okay. And then the current down here is also going to be the same, 5 amps. So the, the 10 volts, this one sees 10 volts, it has to split the 10 volts. So this bulb only gets half of the 10 volts. Does that make sense? So this bulb only sees 5 volts. And this bulb also only sees 5 volts. Now, the 10 volts coming out of the generator has to come back with 10 volts. So you lose five volts here, another five volts here, and it comes back. And five volts at one ohm is five amps. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, the power of anything which is corresponds to brightness is IV. What is the current at the first at the first bulb? Five, ten, five. Five amps. And the voltage at the first bulb, the potential of the first bulb is five volts, five amps, five volts. <clears throat> the brightness of the first bulb is only 25 watts. And the brightness of the second bulb is only 25 watts for a grand total of 50 watts. Those two bulbs in series are less bright combined than the one bulb in by itself. Did I, I could adequately prove it to you? Mm -hmm. All right. So, and then again, I'm going to add a third a third branch. I can move these guys down. Be careful not to touch both sides. As much fun as getting zapped is, I try to only touch one part of the, the electricity at the, the, the time. I'm going to add this third branch right here. Will this light be as bright as the single light or as dim as the double light? Rise a single light. Oh. It's going to be broken like a single light. <laughs> That's why I have spares. <clears throat> well, 
While I'm preparing this, I gotta tell you a story. These bulbs are from Amazon. I got a 10 pack of, of side, these are side linker bulbs. And uh, I got them for my wife because her blinker was doing that funky double blink thing. You know the double blink thing? Uh -huh. Means one bulb's going out. Yeah. But then when I replace it with these, it still did the same double blink thing. I'm like, that's weird. I'm not supposed to be able to change them, they'll be fine. And I talked to Mr. Tucker and he said, you know what that probably is? The bulb is probably got an oil oil in the socket. And I just cleaned out the socket and it worked great. That was exactly what the problem was. There was oil in the socket. The bulb wasn't burning out. There was just oil in the socket. Okay, so take a look. Yeah, third branch as just as bright as the first bulb because the third branch has the same access to the generator that the first branch does. And it doesn't have to divide any of its 10 volts. Is it still reading 10 down there? 8.2. 8.2, okay. So that is a problem with this generator. These are old generators. The A good battery or generator, it doesn't matter what load you put it on, it's gonna have pretty much the same voltage. These guys, these voltages drop as you add load to them, which is why there's a knob, you can adjust them a little bit, like bring it back up to 10 every time. Anyway, that's what we got. They're actually pretty good for, for educational purposes. The important thing is the third branch has the exact same access to the generator that the first branch does. So it's gonna have the same potential. It has the same resistance. It's gonna have the same current. Yeah. Yes, and we will. Yeah. Can I turn this off? Are we good? Which is somewhere around here. I really don't want to stab myself. There we go. All right. <laughs> Thank goodness for Amazon's. This this ten pack of bulbs, same price as a two pack of bulbs. I'm like I'll buy ten. Then I was like, oh, I could do something really cool with electricity. It's cool. All right. So, are we happy with this series parallel thing? All right. Cool. Okay. So. When you are taking readings, just like what we talked about this last time, when you're taking readings of current, you have to put your current meter, called an ammeter, an amp meter, called an ammeter, in series with the device. Kind of like if you're trying to figure out flow rate of a river, you gotta put the thing right in the river. If you are trying to find read, read potential, then you put your measurement on the outside of what you're trying to measure. This is gonna be super important when we do lab. We're doing a simulation tomorrow, and then we're going to be in lab a whole bunch using the snap circuits over there, those boxes over there, really cool snap circuits. We're going to make a bunch of circuits. Okay, so potential, it's the it is the potential to flow, like the pump, the power a pump pushes water through. If you want to measure the potential, you look at the device before the device and after the device in parallel. If you want to measure current, just like the flow rate of water then you have to actually put the meter right into the circuit. This is gonna be super important when you do your your, uh, your simulation tomorrow. You're like, it's not giving it to me. Are you putting the current thing? Uh, yeah, you can measure current and voltage in the same way. Voltage, you look on the outside. Like if I want to measure vol voltage, I would stick my voltage meter here and here to measure the voltage across here. If I wanted to measure current, I would have to break the circuit and put it in right here. And once again, current is charge over time. It is the flow of charge, charge over time. Okay, so now we we primarily discuss direct current, where current flows, where charges flow from high potential to low potential. But there's another kind of current called alternating current. This right now is putting out direct current. There is a high potential and a low potential. Current's going, from, this is the red side, right? Yeah. Current's going from the high potential, going through the lights, down to the low potential, and then back to the generator. What happens in direct current is there's a constant flow of charge. What happens with alternating current is the charge is constantly flowing back and forth, forward and backward, forward and backward, forward and backward. And it goes forward, it goes forward, then backward, and forward, then backward and forward and backward. The polarity of the positives and the negatives, they swap 60 times a second. Do, does current care how fast it's flowing back and forth? No. 
In Europe, 50. In Asia, 50. North America, South America, 60. So that's where we decided to be. They like round numbers. So if you're interested in Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison, um, Nikola Tesla invented. Nikola Tesla is credited with inventing alternating current. If you ask most people who invented the light bulb, guess who they say? Who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison. In fact, the, the globe, that globe with the film inside, it used to be called the Edison bulb. Thomas Edison didn't involve, didn't invent Jack. He just bought it. So I, talk, I think I talked about this before. It's uh, if you want to get your name on something, just buy the company. Uh, you know, there's this car company that makes electric cars named after Tesla. It is the ultimate irony. Tesla hated Edison because Edison was a businessman. And he told Tesla had something. It is the ultimate irony that Elon Musk owns a company called Tesla. Because Elon Musk did not invent anything. He just bought the company called Tesla. You know, you know the Tesla cars? Mm -hmm. I'll probably drive one eventually. Um, yeah, Elon Musk didn't invent those. He's just a business guy. He bought the company. So uh, he's like modern day Edison. Elon Musk, the modern day Edison. Okay, anyway, so uh, direct current uh, basically charges flow from a high potential to a low potential. You find those in batteries, find those in solar cells. Most of our devices need to function in with direct current. Your AirPods need to charge with direct current. Your phone needs to charge and discharge with direct current because your phone operates on a battery. A battery is an electro is a electrochemical cell that needs to work in direct current. But what comes out of our walls is alternating current. So alternating current comes out of our walls. So you need those power blocks, those little, they used to be enormous, now they're like, you know, uh, they're tiny because that one's only about like yay big to turn the 110 volts AC into five volts DC, the felt things like that big. They used to be enormous, uh, but they're much smaller now. And uh, that little power brick. So AC is coming out of the wall and it needs to turn into DC. And how it does that is through some devices that we will learn about later and transformers. But right now, DC is what our devices use. AC is what comes out of the wall. Well. Why do we use AC in the first place then if we always have to use DC? Well, that was the question that people were asking in the, uh, the early part of the 20th century. Like, if our devices need to be DC, why should we even bother with AC? And the reason was twofold. One, generators make AC a lot better than they make DC. And before, that's all, before they had solar panels, everything was generators. Like solar, like the big, the big turbines that are inside the dam. They make AC a lot better than they make DC. And it is easier to move AC over the power lines than it is to move DC over the power lines. So that's why we use AC. All right, questions? How are we feeling? Good. I think we're just about to see what's next. Want to do math? Circuit diagrams. OK, yeah. So um, reading circuit diagrams is kind of handy. So these are elements of circuits. And I got to tell you, this is kind of annoying. Uh, it's going to get really more or more annoying when you go to college and get your IEEE degree. Uh, everybody uses different things for resistors. So batteries are always shown as a large line and a small line, representing a high potential and a low potential. Generally, the large line is the direction of positive charge that way. A resistor in America is a jagged like line, like chuck, 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 like that. That's what a resistor looks like in America and most of Europe. In Asia, they're much simpler. They make a box with a number inside telling you the resistance of the resistor. But, so we use that link. Like, if you put a circle around it, it means it's a device. Right. Lamps and motors are just resistors with circles around them because lamps and motors have resistance. Capacitor, we talked about capacitors. Sometimes the capacitor is two parallel lines. Sometimes it's a line and a curvy line. 
and switch. A switch is something that opens and closes a circuit. When the circuit is closed, current can flow. When a circuit is open, current cannot flow. So here it is closed, here it is open. Closed, open, closed again. So a closed circuit is required for charge to flow. And open. And then finally, ground. Ground is a universal negative charge. So a closed circuit, charge will leave the positive, come back to the negative of the battery. But you can also cause the ground to be the negative charge. You can leave the positive and go to the ground instead. That's what happens in your car. You might not even, you probably don't realize it, most of you haven't. Uh, anyone in auto shop or have been in auto shop? Yeah. So did Mr. Tucker tell you that the entire metal chassis of the car is a giant ground? Because <coughs> it is. <coughs> if you want to send power to your, your door lights or your, your dome lights, <coughs> excuse me, you only need one wire. You just need the positive because you can use the metal shell of the car as the ground. And huh, fuses. OK, fuses and breakers. <coughs> Excuse me. Fuses and breakers operate on the idea that they have some way to allow current to flow, and when it gets to a high point, it stops. When current becomes too large, the fuse will melt or the breaker will trip. So, this is an old bus fuse that was used in cars until about the 1990s. Now they use smaller ones, but they use smaller bus fuses, they still use bus fuses. So when current travels through here and it's too high, that little metal wire will melt. So you basically say, I need a wire that only allows five amps through, and there you go. A 10 amp fuse will be thicker than that. A 30 amp fuse will be even thicker. A one amp fuse will be super tiny. So when the current gets too high, the little metal wire melts and that breaks the circuit, that opens the circuit. With a circuit breaker, not this, there it goes, there goes the animation. With a circuit breaker, there is a, uh, a little bimetallic metal that when it gets too hot, it breaks. And there's also digital circuit breakers that are computer controlled. They're even faster. So a fuse is permanent. When it breaks, it's done. You've got to throw it away and replace it. A breaker, when, it, when, they cur when its current gets too high, you can just throw it back into the closed position. All right, questions? A series circuit. I think we are done. All right, so that's it. That's it for today. Are we good? Yep. All right, hopefully that was. Did it record the whole thing to do it out here? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. All right. So if you haven't done